Hi, my name is Frederic Le Guen. I'm from France and I'm going to show you what is an organization data type. Have you ever dreamed to create a dashboard where directly you connect to your database and also it's impossible for the end user to break your connection or to break your formula? Yes, now it's possible and it's organization data type. Look at this demo. So let's say you have this information and here you have your customer ID. I just have to select this column and with the organization data type, I can collect information about my client, like for instance, the last purchasing date and what was the sum spent by a client, just like that. And here in connection with my database. Also, if I want to have information about my product, I can create a dashboard like this one, where I have in function of the reference of my product, the name, the category, the subcategory, the price of the product. And when I click here, I can change the type of product like this or like this. And I have here also the amount of the sale during the month and the quantity sold. And all of this with organization data type. But before to show you what is organization data type, let me introduce you what is data type in Excel. So let's say you want to collect some information about country, like for instance, the population or the currency code. I'm going to fill few country names. And also, and I do that on purpose, I'm going to write few country names, but in French. So why I do that? It's because maybe it depends the country where you are. You don't know the name of the country in English and you will see the beauty of data type. Automatically, the tool will translate the name of the country in the language of your computer. So let's say I select now the cells where I have the country name and I go to data and here in data, I have here the section data type and in the option, I have geography. As you can see here, automatically a flag has been added in front of each cell. But not only that, also the country Italy, Spain and Japan has been translated from French to English. Why English? It's because in my computer, yes, Office is in English, but it's not the option language that is important here. This one, but this one. If I have selected French as preferred language, automatically here my country will be in French. But of course this video is in English, so I stay in English. Okay, so now I have a flag in front of each cell, but what does it mean? Here, as you can see, I have another option. And when I click here, you can see that I can add fields, like for instance, abbreviation, area, but I have also population. And when I click on this option, Automatically, the data type geography has searched for this country, the population, and also for the currency code. I have here all the currency code. Well, here it doesn't work all the time. As you can see here, I have field. That means there is an error. And it's possible to find why. Because now, if I click on the flag, I open a dialog box where I have here all the information related to Japan. And you can see that when I scroll down, I don't have information about the currency. That's strange. But also what do you have here? It's the source where data type has took all the information. But if like in this example, something is not correct, you can report the problem. And to do that, you click on the flag here. and you submit, just like that. But you can do more. For instance, I don't know the different area of Australia. And it's very important for me to do a demo. So once again, Australia, this is geography data type. Doesn't find it, so I select Australia. 
And in the option, I have here subdivision. And here I have the list of all the different subdivisions, the states, I think, of Australia. But not only that, here again, if I select this colon, I can select the capital or major city. And for these cities, the population. So you can see data type is very precise and you can return a lot of information. You can do that for geography and also for stock exchange. So here in this worksheet, I have written some company name in the world and I'm sure you recognize some of them. And what I want is to know what is the latest stock exchange value for this company. So I select the cells and I go to data type and this time I select stocks. So as you can see, most of the company has been recognized, but when you have the question marks, that means you have to specify here the information. So here, Ford Motor Company, New York Stock Exchange, I select it. Auckland International Airport, so I have here different stock exchange. Let's say I take the Australian Security Exchange. And for Mitsubishi Motors Corporation, I have here some information, I take this one. Also, what is interesting to notice that you can visualize what is a stock exchange. So for Amazon, it's X for stock exchange and NAS for NASDAQ. For Ford, it's XNYS for New York Stock Exchange. And here, for instance, you have XFRR for France for Airbus. Again here, New York Stock Exchange. But for instance, if you have noticed a mistake, so here, this is a stock exchange of Paris, but if you want to take another stock exchange, you just have to right click here on the cell, data type and change. Like this, you have data selector and you have much more information. So I remove this research. So I have here in Spain or Mexican, Stock exchange, why not? It's just an example, like this. And then what I have to do, I select my data and I click here and I can select the latest price, like this. Ah, this one is unknown. Also, the last trade time, like this. But also what you have in data type, it's what we call Wolfram. What is Wolfram? It's a website with a lot of different category like this. So in fact, what's happened in Excel? What we have now is the opportunity to call directly the database of Wolfram in the cell of Excel. So let's have a look at this example. Here I have different people and I want to extract information for these people. What I'm going to do here is to insert this information in a table because it's much more simple. You will see why later. So here I return to data type. This time people. So when there is more than one people, you have to select it again. So here are Michael Phelps and Barack Obama. Okay. And now because I'm in a table, I just need to select this column and add, for instance, date of birth. And why it's important to insert your data inside a table? Because automatically the field you have selected is a header of your column. And again, date of death. Ooh. Uh, yes, unfortunately, there is two. And you can also return an image. And here, as you can see, it's very small, but exactly like if it was a font, you can expand the font size. 
to have a better image. For the food, this is interesting also. Because here, I can return information about nutrition. So you can see that now the symbol is different. And if I want to know the calcium, or more important, vitamin A, or vitamin C for instance, you can see that for the orange it's very important, or for the melon as well. So here you can return a lot of information very quickly. And also there is another one very funny, it's about the movie, so I have selected the most viewed movie in the world per year. Ah, only one movie is unknown, so if I write it like this, yes, selected. So now I select this colon again, and I want to know the rating. Mm -hmm or US box office or in the world, worldwide. But what is very interesting also is you can select for instance here cast and roll. So here you can see that I return a lot of information and when you look at the formula you can see that automatically Excel has added array to text, that means instead of returning in row for each entry, it's automatically in the same row but for a lot of information split by a semicolon. So as you can see, it's very simple to use data type and also it's very funny to collect a lot of information very quickly. But let's think about that. Imagine if you have the opportunity to connect to the database of your company and collect information about your product or also your customer. Well, now it's possible, and that's what we call organization data type. I show you now. So the way to create your organization data type is to create a data model with Power BI. I'm going to collect data. And I'm going to collect this data from Azure and from Azure SQL database. So why I have choose this solution, it's because, as you can see here on my Microsoft SQL Management Studio, I have here this database with these tables. And the beauty to use the Azure SQL database is you just need to know the URL of your database, exactly like a web page. And the URL here in this situation, it's this one. So when I return to my Power BI desktop application, I just here have to fill the URL of my database. And the name of my database. Like this. So here I can select more than one table. Transform and load. So we can see here that the table has been loaded and I check the data model. Automatically you can see that the relationship between the table has been done. This is because most of my keys are the same between each tables. So now what is the next step to create my organization data type? It's very simple. Look at this. So let's say I want to convert this table, the table of my customer, as organization data type. I select it and I open the properties. In the list of options you have here, is feature table. For the moment it's no, 
But if I click here, it turns on yes, and I have to select the row label, the one that is my ID. Client ID, and also what is my key colon, it's the same one. Save. And now what I have to do is to publish this data model. So I publish it. Yes, I want to save it. And I publish it in my workspace. Got it. So now, what I have to do is to return to Excel. Of course, you need to close it and reopen it. And now in data, you can see that in the section data type, I have another section from my organization. And what is it? It's the table customer, the one I have activated as organization data type. So now I just need to fill some customer ID because it's a random database. I'm going to return values from one till this value. Copy paste as value only like this. So now this is my customer ID. So the cells are selected. I activate my data type customers. It's searching. That means it has connected to the database. And as you can see here, there is the icon here saying that it has been connected to the value. And now if I click here, I want to know the name. I have the name and also the first name. I have the first name, the country. and so on and so on and so on. So as you can see, it's very simple to transform a table from your SQL database to a data type. What you need to do is just to create a data model with Power BI. And when it's done, anyone with the access to your data model can connect to the table you have created as data type. But we can do more. Here, if I want to know what is the latest purchase of each client, it's possible. And to do that, I have to create calculate colon in Power BI. So I return to Power BI. So I'm back to Power BI desktop. This time, what I need to do is to create measure. And to do that, I'm going to create a specific table for my measure. So here I enter data and here I'm going to name this table measure like this. Okay, so I have a new table measure. And here what I'm going to do is to create a measure for the cells. But for the moment, as you can notice in my table cells, I just have the price and the quantity, but not the sum, the multiplication between quantity and price. So what I'm going to do is to use Power Query and to create a new column with the multiplication between the two columns. So this time I go to transform data. I call my table cells and I just select the column quantity and price and I go to add column and I apply a multiplication between these two columns. Because I have selected the option add column, automatically Power Query has created a new column with the result of the multiplication. But also what I can do is to change the header here directly in the formula bar, like this. But also what I can do it's to remove some information because as you can see in my database, I have date till 1st January 2014. That's too much. So I can apply directly here a filter to return date after two 
2020. Like that, I will reduce the number of rows to load to my model. Also, here I'm going to explain you what is a query folding, if you don't know what is it. In fact, you can be afraid to add steps because you can think that your model will be heavy and use a lot of memory. In fact, if I right-click here on the step filter row, you can see that I have the option here, view native query. What does it mean? That means instead of doing steps inside Power Query, it's like you have created a specific query on your SQL server. Exactly the same. So till you have this option, edit native query, that means you don't use memory inside Power Query or inside your model. So here it works. And also here, if I right click here, I can still have this option, view native query. So here is a query generated and understood by the SQL server. OK, so now I return to my model. And of course, I'm going to load less rows. That's perfect. And now I'm going to create here my measure. And this measure is cells equal sum of the table cells and the colon total. like this. And now I can remove this colon. Okay. And here is a beauty. Once in the table measure, I just have table and not colon like it was a previous steps. Automatically, this table is on the top of my model. And I save it. So this is the first step. The measure cell is needed in all the models in the world, so I need to create it first. But now I'm going to reuse this measure to create two other measures to find when was the last date of purchase and also what was the sum of the last purchase per client. I show you. So here, what I'm going to do is to calculate the last day of the last purchase. So another measure. And here, what it will be, it will be the max of sales and it will be date of order, this one, just like that. OK, but now how I can link this information with my client ID? I need to create a calculated colon. So this time I go here in my data, in my table customer. And here, what I'm going to do is to create a new colon. This colon will be like this. And what it will be, I call my measure last date purchase, just like this. And automatically, I have the information. So what does it mean? The measure use your client ID, the key of your table, as a filter. I save it. And just to show you now what's happened in Excel with the data type, I publish again this model to my workspace. Do I want to replace the current data set? Yes. And now, if I return to Excel, here I have my information. If I click here, I don't see the new colon, but it's not a problem. What I have to do here, it's just to select again this customer ID. And again, I click on the icon from data type customers. Because here, just like that, I redo a link with my data set. And now, if I click here, we can see that I have the last purchasing date. Interesting. So that means for this client, he doesn't have purchased something till the 1st January 2020. Let's check. So here my query is select. 
from dot cells where my client ID equal this. Also, what I can do instead of star, it will be distinct date order, this one, and also I can order by date order descending, like this. And here we go. As you can see here, the last date for this client is the 20 of June 2016. And because we have just loaded the row for the year 2020 and 21, so this is why for this client in Excel, I have nothing. So for the rest of the document, it's better for me to find other client ID with a result. Okay, so now I'm going to use this information. So what I want now is to calculate here the sum for this last purchase. So now for this second measure, it's a little bit more difficult to write because I have to reuse as a filter the value of the last date. I show you. So this time I'm going to write directly my measure inside a new column in this table. So the table is still customer. The name of the table will be some last purchase, like this. And what will be this function tax? It will be calculate. Calculate what? Calculate the measure cell. And then I have to insert a filter and this filter will be a filter on the table cells and what will be the filter expression well in this situation the filter will be does the colon date of purchase equal the last purchasing date here so i write this expression like this cells equal customer the last purchasing date and I close the parenthesis and one more time the second parenthesis okay and here in this new calculated colon you can see that I have a sum corresponding to the last purchase in function of this date so again I return to home I save, of course, I publish, I don't need to close Power BI because I have already updated my data set when I click on publish, so I return to Excel, here, I select again my client ID, one more time I click on customer to refresh the connection. And now I can see that I have a new option here, some last purchase. And here we go. But now what I want to do, it's another measure to know exactly right now, this month, what is the amount of the sale for each client. It's another measure and this one is not so easy as well. So I return to the Power BI desktop. And this time I'm going to create a new measure. And this time I'm going to call this measure some current months like this. And here, what will be the formula? And here, what will be the DAX function? Well, it will be calculate again. Calculate what the measure sells, this one. But this time it's not filter, but it will be date between. So I have to create two dates. First, I have to select the colon with my date. Sales command order. 
and then what will be my starting date it will be like in Excel date year of today months of today again and one so the first day of the current month and what is the end date end of month of today and zero like this I validate so here is my measure I return to my table customer like this and again I'm going to add a new column here I will name this column cell of the months and it will be equal to my measure some current months and it doesn't work and it's very important for me to show you this because always when you do a recording demo you cut when you have a mistake but here I want to warn you that to create a DAX formula can take time and it's not so easy okay for the end user at the end when you return to Excel it's very simple you just have to specify the field you want to return but create it can take a lot of time for instance for this formula for this DAX measure it took me more than one day to find exactly the correct writing I continue so here there is something wrong a date column contains duplicate dates in fact the message here is not correct the problem is that in my sales table I have here date and time what the function date between needs it's just date so I return to home transform data to open the power query editor and in cell I'm going to extract the date only add colon date date only like this so I have created a new colon with just the date and that's all I return to my data model I return to my table customer okay still the error is because I didn't correct my measure so here instead of this colon I select just sales date the new colon I have created okay so now when I return to my customer table let's check if it works yes we can see here the result of the current amount of sale for this current month and because we are at the beginning of the month most of the latest purchase equal the current sum of the month and this is very interesting because now what I'm going to do is to update my database and we will see that automatically without doing anything automatically this information will be also updated in Excel so at this step I return to Excel but before to do that I have to save my model again and publish it and publish it on my workspace I return to Excel again I apply the data type customer and now I have a new column cell of the months okay so a lot of fields are blank because for these customers they don't order anything during the month but here we can see that I have already two clients and now we are going to update the database so I change the date of my model and I run my script okay so as you can see I'm creating order for my different clients okay so what I have done is to create order for 15 new days 
Now what I have to do is to refresh my dataset and this can be done only on my portal Power BI. So on my Power BI portal, I go to my workspace and here I can see the dataset of my report. I refresh it. OK, I can see the date of the refresh here and now I return to Excel. This was the previous information. I'm going to do a copy paste in value to see if I have differences between the previous result and the next one when the database will be updated. And now what I have to do is just to refresh my connection. And BIM! Automatically you can see that new clients have ordered something and also here you can see that for this client, the last order is 292 euro, but the sum for the month is 565. So that means for this client, he has ordered at least two orders. And how can I know that? Well, I have to create a new DAX measure to know how many orders this client has done during the month. To conclude this video, let me show you how you can also manage image with data type. And to do that, I'm going to use my table product. So here I return to my Power BI desktop and I select my table product. As you can see here, I have already created a column with the URL of my image. And if I go to my server, you can see that I have already a folder with all the picture. It's good, but it's not enough. It's very important in Power BI to specify that this column is an image URL. Otherwise, this image could not be viewed by data type. And something else I want to show you, as you can see here, I have a lot of colon in French. It's because this database is working for the two languages, English and French. But you can avoid to publish it with data type. And here in category, so the name in French, I hide this colon for my end user. And the same for other colon, like this one, this one, not image, of course, and subcategory and the name of the product in French. And something else I want to add, because I have already created the measure, this one, some of the current months, I'm going to reuse the same measure, but this time for my product. I validate. Also, it's very important, don't forget again to return to your data model and to specify that this table is a feature table. And what is my row label? It will be the reference product. OK, my model is up to date. So what is a reference product? I just check here. I have to fill this information. And of course, I must save this document. And again, I publish it on my workspace to update my data set. Now I return to Excel. I create a new worksheet. I populate few cells with the reference and I apply the data type product from my organization. As you can see, I have the icon here. So that means the connection has been made with my database. And now if I select category of product, subcategory, product name, and also the sum of the months, sale of the product. I have here the information and let's check with image. Yeehaw! I have the picture. Not all of them, it's because I don't have all the picture for all the product in my database. You can check for the reference 10 and 11. 10 and 11 here. It's blank in my database. 
So this is the conclusion of this video and I hope it will give you a lot of new ideas a way to build your dashboard in Excel. If you have questions, let's talk about it now.